What's up everybody, it's your boy Quasman and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now right before I even start today's topic, let me give a big shout out to all you new subscribers man. Hey, believe me, you guys are making this channel a whole lot of fun, so thanks for subscribing. And if there's anybody in here enjoying this channel and has not yet subscribed, please just subscribe right here man. Subscribe and press notification bell so that anytime we upload new videos, you're gonna get notified. Let's go into today's topic. Today we're going to talk about the ISO and this is going to lead us to the end of our fundamental basics which was the aperture, the shutter speed and today the ISO. So grab a pen and a paper, get yourself some popcorn and let's start. What is ISO? ISO simply means telling your camera to brighten up your image or to darken your image. Now every camera has its own dedicated ISO button. It's either, wait a minute, ugh, it's either on top here or if you have an entry level camera you have it at the back here if you press on the iso button you can use the dial here to set your iso values now there are some iso values that you might be familiar with like iso 100 iso 400 iso 800 1600 3200 and then going up to the 5200 and no matter what your camera can do so this iso values start from a lower value and can go higher the lower the number, the cleaner your image is going to look and the sharper your image is going to look. The higher the value, the more grain or the more noise you're going to introduce into the image. Now take it like this. If you have a balloon and you stretch the balloon, it comes to a point you see that the details of the balloon start to lost. Like for example, if it has a color, you see that the color start degrading and everything becomes white because why are you pulling it too far apart? That's how your image is gonna look like when you start to push your ISO too, too high, to a higher level, because there you are trying to, to push that image apart and as a result of that, you're gonna get less sharper images and the quality of the image is gonna degrade a whole lot. Every camera has a base ISO. The base ISO simply means the point whereby your camera is gonna give you the best quality and it's also gonna give you the best dynamic rate. But there are some camera manufacturers that have started bringing out cameras that have what we call the dual base ISO, meaning they have one base ISO for proper light conditions and one base ISO for low light conditions, which helps a lot. So which means if you're outside, you can go with the lower ISO. And then when you're in darker areas, you can switch to the higher base ISO so that you can get cleaner images in low light conditions. Now, how can you preserve your image from getting grainy or getting too much noise in it? First thing, you need to make sure that you are tweaking your aperture as low as possible. So for example, if you're somebody who mainly shoots in low light, I'll definitely recommend you getting a camera lens that can go or can step down to aperture value of f1.8 or lower so that you're not gonna boost your ISO in the camera too high. Secondly, you need to make sure that your shutter speed is not too high so you can bring your shutter speed to a level of let's say maybe 100 or maybe 150 and then if you see that still your image is too dark then you go back in and then raise your ISO a little bit not too high because if you raise your ISO too high you're going to definitely degrade the quality of your image which we all don't want okay pretty perfect quick tip when you're shooting in low light make sure that your ISO is not going above 800. For some modern cameras, you can go up to 3200, which is okay. But believe me, if you go above a value of 800, 1600, 3200, your image is definitely gonna get some grain and you're not gonna get the best dynamic range out of your sensor. So keep your ISO as low as possible. All right, that's it for today. We've come to the end of our exposure triangle. I hope you guys learned a whole lot. If you've missed the other two series, I have them down below. Just press on the link and it's going to take you there. If not, at the end of the video, you're going to have the link in there that I can press on it and learn about the shutter speed and your aperture. Now, see you next week on our series where we're going to talk about light. So for all those who are waiting about the light series, next we're going to start to talk about light, how to set up light, how to bounce light, how to shape light. We're going to start to talk about that one. So have a nice week. If you're not yet subscribed, subscribe right here and press notification button. If the video was good, give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down and see you next week on this channel. Bye.